So I have put together um, just a mishmash of um, electrical aptitude tests that I found online. And so I'm just going to go through um, some of the problems. Uh, the first five here um, were from the one website about the, the IBEW. So uh, well, let's start there. So um, this first question says, consider the following formula. A equals B plus 3 times the quantity of 4 minus C. If B equals 5 and C equals 2, what is the value of A? So let's go over something called order of operations. So the order of operations goes, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. There's pretty much four phases of that, okay? So the, parent, the P stands for parentheses, but it also so can be anything that encloses the, um, or separates the expression into pieces. So brackets, parentheses, fraction bars. The two, the E stands for exponents, so powers on something. Uh, the three stands for multiplication and division. The four stands for addition and subtraction. Now you'll notice that multiplication and division is in step three. Addition and subtraction is in step four. Multiplication does not come before division. They are of equal importance. It is like you are reading from left to right. So you're going to multiply or divide from left to right. You're going to add or subtract from left to right. Okay. So let's rewrite this expression. Every place we see B, we're going to put in a 5. Every place we see C, we're going to put in a 2. Okay, so A is going to equal 5 plus 3 times the quantity of 4 minus 2. Now, if we look at our order of operations, this is a parenthesis. It is going to come next the first thing okay it's our first step so we're gonna do that first okay so you're gonna do that so we're gonna get sorry my Apple pencil here died we're gonna get 5 plus 3 and then this parenthesis here is gonna give us a 2 now what that means next is when a number butts up against a parenthesis like that, we can replace that now with a multiplication symbol. Okay, so now if we see what's left in our problem, the parentheses are gone, there are no exponents, the next thing that needs to be done is multiplication or division from left to right. So that means this comes next. So it's going to be 5 plus 6 or 11. So our answer is B. So there's problem number one. Let's take a look at problem number two. Consider the following formula. Which of the following uh, formulas is equivalent to this one? So when I see, like I mentioned earlier, when I see parentheses that are next to each other, that implies multiplication. Well, when we have more than one piece inside of the multiplication, we must distribute. Now, yes, there's a 3 out in front. What I'm going to do with that 3 is I'm going to hold it, and I'm going to deal with this. Now, multiplication is what's called commutative. If there are three things multiplied together, I can multiply in any order. Let me give you an example of that. 3 times 2 times 5. Okay. I can do 3 times 2, get 6. 6 times 5 is 30. So that's one way I can do it. Sorry, this stylus is yucky. And Or I could do uh, the 2 times 5 first and still get 30. Okay, That's what it means when they say multiplication is commutative. If you have things in line that need multiplied, you multiply in any order that you want. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do here. So if we go to this, the way that this piece is going to work is 
you are going to think of no matter how many things are inside this X is going to distribute to both things and then this 5 is going to distribute to both things okay so let me move this over here so we can see it better so Y is going to equal 3 times x times x is x to the second x times negative 2 is negative 2x 5 now we're going to distribute the 5 5 times x is positive 5x 5 times negative 2 remember a positive times a negative is a negative now we are going to uh, combine like terms. Like terms are things containing the same letters with the exact same powers. So these two would be considered like terms. So we would get x squared plus 3x minus 10. Now you'll notice the expression uh, from our answers, they do not give us any parentheses or brackets or anything. So that 3 now needs to be distributed, okay? So when you distribute it, remember, you're multiplying it times all the pieces, okay? So it's going to be 3 times x squared. It's just 3x squared. 3 times 3x is 9x. 3 times negative 10 is negative 30. So our answer is A. So there's that one. Let's look at number three. Consider the following pattern of numbers. What is the next number in the pattern? So what I always look for is, does it appear to be going down each time? Does it appear to be going up each time? Does it go back and forth? Um, you know, I, I first try to look for the, the, just the very subtle basics. So look what happened here. We went up by 2. Okay? Look at here. We went down by 5. Then we went up by 2. And then we went down by 5. So I think we found the pattern. Okay? So if you look, Um, it seems like the next one should go up by 2. So our answer would be C. Let's take a look at number 4. It says consider the following formula. Which of the following statements is true for this formula? When the value of B is less than 8. Okay, so when it's problems like these, um, what I do is, okay, look at A and B here. They both are start or A and C, I'm sorry. They're both starting with the premise that B is less than 8. So pick a number that's less than 8, okay? So let's pick the number 7. Standard 7, less than 8, and let's plug it in. Well, we would get 1 half of 7 minus 4. Well, half of 7 is 3.5. 3.5 minus 4. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> like I said, my, my Apple Pencil died, and I'm trying to use a yucky stylus. And we get a negative number. Okay. We get negative 0.5. So it appears as if C is wrong, but A will be our correct answer. But now let's do it again, okay? Let's say that B is greater than four. So let's, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, B says greater than eight. So let's pick nine. So if B is nine, A is going to be one half of 9 oop, minus 4. Well, 1 half times 9 is 9 halves or 
minus 4. It's a positive 0.5, so that one's wrong. Okay, now let's look at D. When the value of B is greater than 4, A is positive. So let's pick 5. Let's see what happens. 1 half of 5 minus 4. So that's going to be not that. Half of 5 is 2.5 minus 4 is negative 1.5. So that's not right. So our answer is A. So there is number 4. Let's try number five here. Consider the following table. Which of the following choices represents the same relationships as demonstrated by this table? Now let's kind of look and see what's happening. Every single time our values are going um, up by one, okay? So, so look, negative five, plus 1, negative 4 plus 1, negative 3 plus 1. So those are each going up by 1, and these are going up by 1. Okay. Now what's our starting value? Our starting value is negative 5. So if we look at, at, at 0, we think of what's 0. If we do y equals mx plus b, this value is our starting value at 0, so we know that's negative 5. This value is the change in y, positive 1, over the change in x, positive 1. So our equation would be 1x minus 5. Okay. So let's take a look at our chart in a. So if we kept going with this, we can get to 10 pretty quickly, right? Okay, so at 7, we would be at 2, and at 8, we would be at 3, and at 9, we would be at 4, and at 10, we would be at 5. Not negative 40, so this is incorrect. Look at the equation that I just wrote out uh, up above, y equals x minus 5. They got the minus 5 right, but they sure did not get the over 2. So, and what could you do? Well, if you plug in 0, you're going to get negative 5. If you plug in 1, you better get negative 4. We do not. We get negative 4.5, so that one's out. y is equivalent to the difference between the value of x and a constant c, where c equals 5. Okay. So let's actually go through that. y is equivalent to the difference between x and a constant, where the constant equals 5. So the difference of x and 5. Well, that's exactly matching the equation we wrote above. The answer is c. Okay. And let's look at why d is wrong. Because our x's and y's are both changing at an equivalent rate, it is a linear equation. It is a line. You see how this does not continue at an equivalent rate? It should kind of go like that. So that is not linear, it's not going to match. Okay, so the answer to that one is C. Let's take a look at this one. Problem number one. Um, this is, well, these are exactly the problems I found before. So let's see, let's find some different ones here. So those two are the same, that's the same, this must be a standard one, so let's, well I'm, I'm not <laughs> doing very well finding 
things here. Okay, so let's let's just talk about some some general math skills that you might come across that you might uh, that might you know show up. Okay, so let's remind you some rules of standard addition in case that you can't use a calculator. Um, for addition, you're going to, if there are no decimal values in the problem, you're going to line up the back of the values. Oop. You're going to add up the aligning digits. If there's a number here, 8 plus 3 is 11, remember you put down the 1 from the 11, and the tens of the 11 goes up here and adds on to the 4. Um, number 3, if you are adding decimals, you have to line up the decimal point, and then you do the same procedure that you did before and bring the point down right so the point would be right below that and you just add it up okay uh let's do a subtraction one here i'm sorry so the way that it's written we're going to line up the decimal points You notice how the bottom number uh, has two decimal places, but the top number only has one. So we're going to put a zero placeholder. Okay. We have to do some subtraction, um, and it may require us to borrow. Now let me remind you of those rules from back in the day. Uh, eight minus zero is impossible. Okay. So we take from the five, make it a four, and then this becomes a ten because that was the tens place, so we've taken away 10 from the, from the original problem. So 10 take away 8 is 2. Now the same thing's going to happen in this one. I can't take 7 from 4, so I'm going to borrow from this spot. Make that a 14. 14 minus 7 is 7. Decimal place comes down. 2 minus 2 is 0. 9 minus 7 is 2. So our answer is B. Uh, multiplication, let me just remind you. We're going to multiply the 7 times the 4, carry the 2 from the 20, multiply the 7 times the 5, that's 35, add that 2 onto there, there's 37. With decimal multiplication, like number 7, um, remember, you're just going to do exactly what we did for number 6. Um, except our final answer, you're going to carry out three places because there's three decimal places total here, okay? So if that reminds you of anything here. Um, one thing you can do for eight is if you hate division, um, if you multiply this times any of those, you uh, should get whichever one is correct should be the multiplication of 422625. Let's talk about fractions a little bit. To add fractions or subtract fractions, you must have what's called a common denominator. We're going to line up the whole part. We're going to line up the fractional part. And we're going to focus on our uh, denominator here. They have to match. Now we can find a match by multiplying them together. 4 times 8 is 32. You can change them to 32s. That does work. But if you realize the fact that 4 goes into 8 exactly two times, we can multiply this on top and bottom by 2. And this is going to be now 2 eighths. And then we're able to add it together. So 3 plus 7 is 10. 2 eighths plus 5 eighths is 7 eighths. Okay? Um, let's talk about division. Um, division of fractions and multiplication of fractions. You uh, don't want or care about common denominators. But let's do number 10 for you here. Uh, 53 and 5 eighths. Divide 
divided by six and one half. So we're going to do that trick uh, that you might remember from uh, back in uh, an algebra class or well, probably earlier than that, uh, like middle school probably. You're going to do 53 times 8, and you can do that on the side if you don't have a calculator. Um, if you have a calculator, you can do it on the calculator. We're going to add 5 to that. So 53 times 8 is 424, plus 5 is 429. You're going to put that over 8. Now we're going to do the same thing for 6 and a half. 2 times 6 is uh, 12. 12 plus 1 is 13. Now for division, we do not leave it division. We are going to change it to multiplication. And the rule is, is we keep the first thing, flip the sign, flip the last thing. Now what it actually is here is the multiplication of the tops over the multiplication of the bottoms. Okay. Now, we can do that a few different ways. So some people will just multiply tops with tops and bottoms with bottoms. Um, the 2 and the 8 can reduce, actually. So 2 goes into 8 four times. So if you're doing this without a calculator, I would suggest canceling those things out before you do anything else. Now, what's kind of an interesting fact is 13 does go into 429. We can do the same trick there. That goes into 429 33 times. So we end up getting 33 times 1, which is 33, and 4 times 1, which is 4. And 33 fours, since 4 goes into 33 8 times with 1 left over, our answer is C. There's a little um, fraction review for you. Uh, percentages. I always like when I see what is of equals. Um, I always kind of think of this. Is over of equals percent over 100. Just kind of a quick little uh, place to put your numbers and things. So the is here is 130. No, it isn't. It's the thing we're trying to find. What is? What is? That's, that's, our, that's our unknown. The of is 75. The percent is 130, and that's always over 100. Now, anytime you set up a proportion like this, it's pretty easy to solve. Just cross multiply and then divide by whatever number you didn't use. And so x is going to be 130 times 75 all over 100. And you get 97.5c. So there's a little decimal kind of hint for you. Now let's look at this problem. This is a Pythagorean theorem. Let me remind you what that is. If you have a right triangle, here's the right angle. This is your A, this is your B, this is your C. Um, if A is, uh, and here's the formula right there a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's always the sides that make an L squared and added together will be the 
uh, equal to what's called your hypotenuse, that longest side. So we get 3 squared plus b squared equals 5 squared. So you see how I put in the a spot a 3, in the uh, b spot it's unknown, in the c spot a 5. So this is going to be 9 plus b squared equals 25. Now let's go over the rules of algebra as to how you solve this equation. We're going to um, solve for b. So we need to subtract 9 from both sides to get that b by itself, and that's going to be 16. Now, we want some number when it is squared to equal 16, so multiplied by itself. So look at the answers. A, 4 times 4, 16. B, 2 times 2 is only 4. C, uh, 3 times 3 is only 9. So the answer is A, 4. Mathematically speaking, the answer would be found by taking the square root of 16. So there's some problems. Oop. Oh, let's take a look at this one here. So some rules that you want to know um, is that the angles of a triangle will always add up to 180. Okay, here it says the value, find, what is the value of angles A and C if angle B is 120? And the key here is isosceles. Now what that means is this angle and this angle match. And so 180 minus 120 is 60. Now you know 60 isn't one of the answers. That's not the answer. A and C total 60. So that means they both have to equal 30. In an isosceles triangle, the two base angles are going to be equal that are across from the equal sides. So there you go. Uh, oh, goodness. Here's just some, uh, some different um, application problems. We'll go over those real quick. In your job as a cashier, a customer gives you a $20 bill to pay for a can of coffee that costs $3.84. How much change should you get? Well, I worked uh, at a bank for a while, and um, what I was always taught is to think about what change would bring you up to the next dollar. So we would need 16 cents to get to the next dollar. So that brings us up to $4 now. They gave us 20, so if we give them the 16 cents, 20 minus 4 is 16. We would still have to give them $16. So the answer is $16 and 16 cents. Uh, number two, over the last five days, you made the following number of sales calls. On average, how many calls did you make each day? So the uh, way to find the average of five things is just add them up and divide by five. So it's going to be eight plus seven plus nine plus five plus seven Oop. <laughs> divided by five. Okay. So eight plus seven plus nine plus five plus seven is 36. This is going to be 36 divided by five which is 7.2. Number three. You work in a furniture repair shop and are taking apart an old table to refinish it. You are trying to remove a bolt with a wrench. You tried a half inch uh, wrench, but found it was slightly too big. And your wrenches are sized in 1 16th increments. Well, if you look at a half, if we change that to sixteenths. We do that by multiplying the top and bottom by eight. That's eight sixteenths. So if it was slightly um, too big, we just want to be slightly under that. So the answer I think that would be best would be C. A chemist has a certain number of containers of liquid. Each container is labeled with a number of fluid ounces it contains. 
The chemist is assisting the lab assistant the task of labeling each container with the number of cups of liquid it contains. Which of the following formulas should the chemist give the lab assistant to use for the task? So they want to know if you have the ounces, how do we go um, to the cups? Well, back in the day, here I'm going to add a little blank page here. I'm going to show you a little picture. I don't know if this is going to come up in your test, but uh, if you have a gallon, and I'm going to make a very, there's a gallon. It contains four quarts, like four quarters. You know. Each quart contains, I should make this bigger, but pint, two pints. I'm sorry, I don't have my good stylus today. Each pint contains two cups. And each cup contains eight fluid ounces. And if you can fit a little eight in there. And then you're able to do all kinds of conversions, okay? Now if we go back to what they're saying, is one cup equals eight fluid ounces. So that's the fact from this picture that you would have to, to take away, okay? So let's go back. It says uh, a cup is eight fluid ounces. So if we know the number of fluid ounces to go backwards, we need to divide by eight. Now it's not eight divided by the fluid ounces, it's the fluid ounces divided by eight. <clears throat> now that isn't, <clears throat> excuse me, an option here. But to divide by eight is the same as to multiply by the fraction 0. 0.125 because 0. 0.125 is one eighth. So that is our answer for that one. Let's look at number five. The farm where you started working has a vertical cylindrical oil tank that is two and a half feet across. Now, I can't draw, but we're just going to draw a pretend little picture. It is two and a half feet across. Okay. The depth of the oil can is two feet. If one cubic foot of space holds 7.48 gallons. How many gallons of oil are in the tank? Okay, so let's do some math. The volume of any cylinder is the area of the top times the height. That is one half. It is not, I'm sorry. <laughs> it is pi r squared is the area of a circle times the height. So that is the volume of a cylinder. So that's going to be 3.14. Now, they said that the whole, uh, it's two and a half feet across, so that means the radius is 1.25. Just divide that in half. And then our height is 2. Okay. So, now, remember, this is going to be cubic feet. So, 3.14 times 1.25 squared, or uh, times another 1.25, however you want to think about that. So, this is 9... 0.8125 cubic feet. Okay, now that's the volume. Gosh, I'm so sorry I don't have my good stylus right now. Now, they said that every cubic foot holds 7.48 gallons. So if we do 9.8125 times 7.48, we should get what we want. So times 7.48 is 73 plus a little extra. Okay, so that's our answer there. Let's go over some algebra ones. Okay, so again, <laughs> one, two, three, four, those are all ones we've seen before. I think 
that at least will get you started. Um, and then there are some other things out there I'll take a look at. Okay, good luck to you.